special delivery. This Ooh, these are that. new name tags. Catch you in the middle of mid morning snack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good morning, Daytona. Uh, Good to see everybody here, and what better way to lead off our Thursday uh, sessions here in the media center is, is the affable Matt Kenseth, the driver of the number $20 general Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. And uh, Matt, uh, it's good to see you. I saw you briefly the other day at Media Day, but uh, nothing expanded, but uh, anyhow... <laughs> Maybe talk a little bit about Daytona. You won this race. Um, talk about, obviously, you're coming off, um, you know, a season that was uh, just extremely solid coming out of the gate with the new race team. Let's talk about your mindset here, how your car is, you know, what it would mean to win the Daytona 500 again and those types of things. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the season last year ended better than our week started down here, so it hasn't been a, a, a particularly good start to the to the week for uh, for us in the 20s. So um, looking forward to getting in the race tonight. Hopefully we found some more speed in our car from, from where it was yesterday. We can uh, learn th some things tonight, hopefully to apply to Sunday, get a decent finish, and, and get a good spot to start. So that's kind of, uh, kind of what we're looking at today. Looking forward to getting back in the, the, the nationwide car. Um, today with a, the kind of the rules changed up a little bit and uh, uh, kind of a different team over there. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting rolling on that here this morning as well. Take questions from Matt. Let's start back in the back. Mark Long, Bob, and Lewis, and then we'll work our way up. Mark Long with AP. Matt, after uh, yesterday's incident, did you, uh, did you go back, look at that any more than the, the quick look you had yesterday? And have you talked to Joey about uh, maybe what went down? Um, I, I looked, I mean, I saw all the replays, you know, when I was, when I was up in a trailer, um, obviously the wreck was, was behind me. Um, I have not talked to Joey. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, for some reason this week, it seems like everybody gets big runs through a trial and, um, I was really just trying to, trying to stay straight and wait until, uh, we get the next line cleared. So I was actually going to try to find my way back to the pits. So, so anyway, yeah, when he got close to just moved my car to the left a little bit, um, you, you know, but then he just kind of couldn't get off me. It looked like he was getting hit from behind from the 21, and he just clipped me in the right rear, and then he got clipped at the same time. So uh, just not a lot of uh, a lot of extra space out there. We'll go to Bob Pacris, Lewis Frank, and Claire B. Lang. Uh, Bob Pacris, sporting news. Uh, <laughs> after the unlimited and practice yesterday, I mean, is there apprehension for uh, tonight? And if you get through tonight unscathed, do you just do maybe one lap or two Friday and Saturday before the 500? Yeah, I mean, the second practice, I mean, I don't know if there's a lot of apprehension for me, but there probably is everyone else. Everyone else is probably trying to stay away from the 20 and 22 whenever they see those cars together, like they're bailing out in practice. But, um, no, nah, I mean, tonight the strategy for me is really no different. I mean, you want to go there and you want to learn everything that, that you can possibly learn. You want to try to get in some some different situations, um, try to try to bank all that. Um, for Sunday, so you can kind of make the right moves. Hopefully, on Sunday, be in the right place. Try to get as much, uh, you know, as much feedback as you can about the car, and, and you know, maybe what you need and what you don't need for those final couple practices before the 500. So, so, so really, no apprehension. I mean, obviously, when a week goes like that, you know, you're, you know, obviously, you think about it a little bit and you try to try to figure out how to stay away from problems. Lewis Frank, Claire B. Lang, and Tom Jensen. Back here. Lewis Frank of Reuters. To follow up a little further, um, any concerns about Sunday, or is it is it are people just more comfortable with the new Gen Six car and be a little more daring? Uh, no, nah, I mean I think uh, I think whenever any of us come to plate races, there's a, a certain degree of apprehension or worry or whatever. You know, thinking about being in a wreck. Um, you know, your chances are greater whenever you come to daytona and talladega than than most other racetracks because there's just so many things that are that are out of your control and the racing you know style is uh you know is a lot different so um you know i i don't know you really can't predict what's going to happen going forward i mean i've seen a lot of times where you've come down here and the, the shootout's been crazy and maybe the 150s or whatever and then by the 500 is kind of kind of not so much so uh, i mean i think you have to pretty much look at every incident separately you know, to kind of kind of see what happens. Claire B. Lang, Tom Jensen, Dwight Drum. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio at the Care Center. 
Uh, Parker Kligerman said he thought that Joey was being aggressive too fast or in practice when you weren't racing that night and that he thought Paul Menard, he, Paul Menard and he talked, they said the same thing. But kind of a question like, what would be too aggressive in a practice session? Is close side drafting not good? Everybody was pretty close. In your mind, you know, what would be too aggressive in practice? Well, I mean, whenever there's a wreck, you're going to... You know, you don't want to wreck in practice, so I think they're probably probably looking back, talking talking about that. Like I said, every wreck's a little different. Um, you, you know, Paul was just uh, Paul and the five were just kind of merging, and we were, we had a two wide pack, and obviously you have to go three wide when you catch slower cars. You can't really slow up for for the line and just pile in behind it because you'll get you'll get crashed. So you kind of we're just going around that, and we're just kind of waiting, honestly, to to clear those guys. So. Um, you know, I got kind of slow with Paul on my left rear, and that just brought Joey's car in really fast through the through the trioval, and uh, um, and the twenty one was right on Joey. I mean, I think I think we were going to be okay if the twenty one went to hit Joey, because even though Joey hit me a little bit, he was kind of being pushed into that hole, and uh, you know, I got it straightened out, and it looked like Joey was going to get straightened out, and then the twenty one ran over him. So I think it was just kind of a, a little bit of a Cordian effect where there wasn't a lot of a lot of space in between cars there. You know, there wasn't a lot of room for a lot of room for error. Tom Jensen, Dwight Drum, and then Dustin Long. Hi, Matt. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. You won this race twice. You almost won last year. How important is it to get a Toyota in victory lane in this race since they haven't won yet? And, and uh, how much extra emphasis within the Gibbs camp is being put on this, especially with you guys running as well as you did so far? Yeah, I'd say... Um I'd say it's important. I'm sure um, you know the people from Toyota could probably answer a question better than me, but I would assume it's an important to win a Daytona 500 and important to win a championship. Those are two things they they, they haven't done yet since they've they've been in the sport. So um, obviously that's always always our focus. I don't think we put any more or less effort into uh, the Daytona 500 than than we did last year. You know, I mean it's always a always a focus. It's always something you're working on. You know, it's the biggest race of the year. It kicks off the season. Um, you know, so you're, you're always working hard on that, but I don't think any, any, you know, more or less than any other season. There's a lot going on, you know, and you have to, uh, you have to focus on, uh, you know, not too much on this week, but not, you know, don't skip over it either. You know, there's a lot going on with all the open tracks coming up with the rules changes, the ride height and the aero stuff. So we've been working hard on a lot of stuff this winter, been doing a lot more testing. Everybody has, all organizations have more than normal because of all the rules changes and format changes. So, um, but I, I'd say, um, I'd say the focus is the same as it was last year. Let's go to Dwight Drum. We'll go to Dustin and then to Dennis to my right. Uh, Dwight Drum, Uh Matt, probably what you guys do best is adjusting to all the different tracks, conditions, everything. And you adjusted extremely well to your new team. So, so did the rules changes? Do you just kind of look like that as like well, another hurdle on the way? Yeah, I mean, I think whenever there's a there's a change, uh, especially a rules change, um, you know, you have to look at it as an opportunity, and um, you know, you have to go, you know, try to get a jump on that and try to get a jump better than the other organizations. So I think, um, like I say, I think you look at it. I, th I know they do at JJR as an opportunity to get a hold of that and try to try to, you know, figure it out, you know, quickly and be on top of your game when you get to Phoenix and Vegas and California and Bristol, the first handful of tracks. I felt like they did a um, extremely good job of that last year with the with the Gen Six car. I felt like we came out of the gate and we were really strong at, at every kind of racetrack to start the year off, and I, I felt like that was a a good springboard for the rest of the season. You know, so um, so hopefully we can do that again. Go to Dustin and then to a Dennis to my right. Dustin Long, MRN.com. You mentioned earlier about uh, the big runs in the trioval. Can you further just kind of explain what's so different? that you're sensing you're sensing now compared to last year is it just only in the trioval and i guess the other question is 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 why are you you know why is this happening in that sense yeah i mean i i don't know that it's drastically different than last year i mean the spoiler is a little bigger so you would think that you'd get a little bigger little bigger runs than than what you would before and you could style other cars out more than you would before because they have more spoiler you're piling more air on the blade and all that kind of stuff so um, you know they did make a change, so it's it's um, it, it seems like it's a it's it's a little bit different, probably more so than we thought. I don't think a half inch spoiler. Most people probably don't think you'd even tell the difference, but it seems to be a little different. Seems like you get a little bigger runs. Um, I was surprised, um, I guess pleasantly surprised by the end of the shootout. I mean, there's hardly any cars out there, and um, they're the unlimited, and um, they could still do some passing, and the racing was still still good. It was amazing the runs you could still get. So um, I think overall it's going to be good for for these four races. It, it seems like it's um, brought both lanes 
back a little bit instead of everybody just being stuck on the top. It seems like that, that bottom got working Saturday night. So I think it'll make better racing. I think the bigger runs you can get on people and the more the more passing you can do, you know, without having four or five other cars having to commit to make it happen, I think the, the better show it makes. So how challenging is that protecting your position now? You know, it's maybe you know a little bit different you know if they get a if they get a big run on you and you're out there by yourself and and um you, you know obviously the faster that they're uh, getting a run at you the less opportunity you have to block that which i think is also good i think that creates you know more passing and uh and, and more action over here to dennis to the right dennis Krause, motorsports minute matt the winner of uh sunday's race essentially qualifies for the chase virtually how does that change the dynamic for that driver for the rest of the year I wonder if they get the hat. Probably not. Um, no. I, you don't get the hat yet? Not yet. Okay. Um, I don't know. I haven't spent a ton of time thinking about the chase in that part of the format, to be totally honest with you. I've been more focused on the rules changes with the, the right-heart rules and arrow changes and the qualifying changes and trying to get our arms around that stuff. Um, the other part's a long ways away. I mean, hopefully um, – Hopefully we can run like we did last year, and hopefully we'll get a win and, and, and get one early. Um, but then I don't think you really have to spend a ton of time focusing on that until August, August or September, you know, if you're fortunate enough to be in. So so certainly it seems uh, really different than what it's ever ever been before. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know until we get in that spot. Hopefully we'll be in that spot and spend a little time thinking about it. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know what to think about it. But, yeah, it's, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely a different dynamic for sure. Any additional questions? That's a no. Jenna, well, Jenna, Jenna decided to come in, so she's got a question. Come on. Hey, well, it is only 10 after 11. That's true. It's early. Hello, Matt. Jenna Fryer, AP. Um, you had a really good year last year. Exceptional. I already answered this question before you got here. Did you? Yeah. Yes. What's, what's the rest much. of the question? I'm just kidding. Carry on. Are you sure? <laughs> Go ahead. So how do you avoid the things that Carl went through and Denny went through, that, that second year drop off, that, that drought and of not living up to the expectations set by the year before? Yeah, I mean, I think every, uh, every season is a little different. I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a huge believer in momentum in either direction or, or curses or jinx or you did this, so you can't do that. I'm not really... I mean, I think every week's a different week. I think, uh, I think that whole group over there is is really focused. I think they probably feel better going into this season than they than they felt. You know, I don't know about going into last season, but um, certainly I think with Denny being healthy and winning Homestead was a, was a big deal, and him coming out and winning again another night. I mean, Denny's uh, Denny's back, which is great, except for the fact that. When he wins, it means that I can't. So I mean that that part stinks. But I mean it's good that uh, in all seriousness, it's good that he's back running good again. Um, Kyle had one of the best careers he's ever or best years he's ever had. We had a great year. So um, I, I feel good about. it. I think we carry a lot of momentum into the into the off season. Um, everybody's working hard to try to try to get better, um, including me. I know I need to be better. So um, you know I think it's a new year. What happened last year really doesn't uh, really doesn't matter once they once they drop the green on Sunday and we're just gonna going to work hard and um, hopefully get the results again where do you need to be better man i think there's a lot of areas we could we could start with saturday i probably know where i am before i make a move <laughs> um so I, I don't know i mean i always think you look at stuff and and try to get better i think there's a lot of a lot of things that i could have done better last year i think we did a lot of things good but i think um certainly personally i think there's a lot a lot of uh, areas and places where i can improve and working on that over here, far left, Allison, Stan. You're not that scary, Stan. Sorry. Stan Creek Moore with RPMTonight.com. And I wasn't going to ask this, but now you've mentioned Denny's name. How close are your setups? Because he obviously has looked extremely strong. So how close are your setups, and, and do you feel as comfortable with what you've got? Um, all the cars are relatively close, especially when you come to super speedways, there's, there's not really a, a very big window of things that you're going to work on or really change as a setup. And Daytona is still, the pavement's pretty good. And especially like racing at night, um, handling is not going to be a big issue. It could be Sunday. I don't know what the weather forecast is. I haven't looked yet, but, um, you know, if, it, if it's warm enough, it could be a little bit of an issue, but, um, 
you know, Saturday night, I mean, you know, and tonight, I mean, everybody's setting up for speed more so than, than handling, you know, because the track's going to have a lot of grip. Anybody else? Matt, thank you for coming in, thank and good you. luck the rest of this weekend.